Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is uh, Bibi Lorenzetti, and I am here with Natalie today. We are on this online uh, village where women from all over the world have been willing to share their birth stories and their stories of transitioning into motherhood as a way to empower each other through storytelling. So I'm very honored to have Natalie Cohen here. She is in New Orleans, and I'm going to let her introduce her wonderful self. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Can you tell me a little bit about where you're from and where you currently are? I am from, born and raised in New York City, I'm from Manhattan, and I am currently in New Orleans, and uh, my family background is um, from Israel and Tunisia, Iraq. <laughs> That's a, quite a quite a mix. Yes, very much. And you so. speak you speak other languages, right? Aside from English. Yeah, I've, I've traveled. Yeah, I've traveled a lot. But besides traveling, just growing up um, at home, speaking Hebrew, traveling to see my my relatives in Israel, and then I, as a dancer, traveling the world, picked up more languages, and now speak. French, Spanish, uh, Portuguese, <laughs> and some Italian even, <laughs> yeah. That's great. And so uh, you had a, a background in dance. Yes, I have a, I've been a dancer my whole life. And, um, and I'm now a teacher, an access syllabus teacher specifically. And, I do other things too, but definitely stay strong with dancing. So you still, that's still part of your, of your like everyday life, the dancing for yourself, not just the teaching, but as like a thing that you do, yeah. a practice that you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Do you miss performing? Um, I've done less of that in the past decade I mean I used to do a lot more of that but um I just miss being other dancers like with a good floor where you can like kind of fall and move around and uh I miss that more than anything and I am actually now in a show um that involves uh, mothers so all mom dancers and mom musicians and the choreographer is a mother that's so <laughs> pregnant, wonderful a pregnant mother Yes, and uh, so we're going to be performing. We're taking it in uh, stages because the choreographer is nine months pregnant, and so when she goes through the birth, um, we'll probably meet again in the fall, and then we'll perform in the spring. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What's the name of the project? Um, it's called Head Full of Hair. A head full of hair. Okay. <laughs> As a reference to when your when your baby's born the head full nice. of hair because I guess Aww. yeah her first child was born with a lot of hair um and it actually is uh like a process through parenting during the pandemic uh, nice. kind of how we're we developed the piece and, and then it's of course evolved into just other in general yeah. or parent yeah oh I can't wait to see this That's yeah really it's exciting. really cool yeah, that. it's really it's been really healing to be to be in rehearsals again, but also to like be in a space with other mothers and uh, analyze parenting. I don't think many people get to do it. They're just so wrapped up in it. Um, but when you're like making a piece about it, you're analyzing it. And so right. it's been really helpful to think about all the things that we do. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. And then you're also running a pop-up restaurant of sorts. Ima is it called? What, it's called Ima, name? which Ima. Ima means means mother. Um, it means mother. The 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 reason I called it Ima is because my mom is an incredible cook, um, and so she's really taught me all my skills in the kitchen. And uh, I wanted to name it after her, Julia, but. It, it, it evolved into Ema because it's not only her cooking, it's like my grandmother's and mm. from both sides. And like, 
And then I became a mother. And so I thought that would be perfect. And then another perfect thing about it is I spelled it IMA, which stands for um, each letter is like where I'm from, which is Iraq, Middle East, oh. Africa. Yeah. Wow. So North, a lot of North Africa specifically. Yeah. In. It all came together. Yes. And I've been um, popping up in uh, with the with Ema all over New Orleans, like different events, different concerts. And it's been so much fun. Yeah, I've been watching him like, wow, I love everything that's been happening to you since you gave birth. Um, a lot has transformed for me. <laughs> yeah. All, everything came together. It's like as if I was waiting for it my whole life or something. Yeah. I love that. So <laughs> tell really me a little good. bit about, I know we were pregnant together for a part of the way and we kind of touched in here and there, but I want to hear, I want to hear about, you know, how you got to be pregnant and then how the pregnancy was for you and just the whole leading to labor and birth. Yeah. Um, well, I was, I'm with Russell. We're still not married, but we, we plan to be. Um, and we actually were not planning on having a baby together. I think he was a lot um, on board with that. <laughs> but we got, as it happens sometimes. And um of like the beginning of the pregnancy because of the indecisiveness of it all felt like really tumultuous and scary. Mm -hmm. I'm losing you a little bit. I don't know if it's your headset. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So it was a little bit tumultuous at the beginning. Yes. Um, because we were, we didn't have like a mutual decision about it. So also it just felt, yeah, it was just scary because it was unplanned. Um, but the pregnancy itself was like, like the baby was so much stronger than anything I could have ever like decided on. It was like, it was mm -hmm. decided for, it felt like it was decided for us and uh, it felt like it was going nowhere, <laughs> like, uh, like a really strong magnet that was like stuck in my mm. solar plexus. That's what it felt like to me. Wow. Yeah. So I knew that it was going to happen. I just didn't know like how we were going to come together on it. And mm. luckily I have an amazing partner who, despite what my parents told me that people don't change, um, has changed so much and changes all the time and is really good at it um, for the better, like becomes a better person every day. So um, yeah, he was just eventually just started opening up. I and mean, we did some, we actually like, he actually did a ayahuasca ceremony um, mm -hmm. to kind of come to terms with the pregnancy and it helped him, it helped him decide on yes. Um, so he like sat with himself and the medicine and then you know like was his first time ever doing that also and so it was really powerful and um the next day he was like we're having this baby <laughs> wow so I mean not that I was I was going to decide for my own terms anyway yeah. but it was helpful to have it be both of us you know yeah. yeah and then it was just like once we accepted it and like uh things started moving along in the pregnancy like it really started feeling like a blessing and everyone around me was really embracing that I was pregnant and like felt right and, and very exciting and even like my my relationship with my parents I remember improved um just felt like I was like this like person you know that that people could now respect more I felt that too. It, it was definitely like a shift. There's this kind of like, oh, well, if I can do this, I'm definitely an adult and I'm definitely worth <laughs> being treated yeah. a certain way and like standing yeah. up for myself a certain way. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's like physically on the outside, like you're shifting and you're changing and people from the yeah. outside can see your body, that there's something different about it than everyone else. So that, but I think energetically, it's like even stronger. It's like just... Yeah people were treating me like 
like there was like a red carpet in front of me the whole pregnancy <laughs> and I, I traveled we went all over the world pregnant we were I was in Rome I was in Italy and I remember like people like waiting like older people and it was hot and we were waiting to get into the Coliseum and like the guard saw me and just just took me right to the front you know <laughs> I don't even remember if I even paid same thing we were in Jerusalem and people were trying to get into the sea uh, where Jesus is supposedly buried uh -huh. we were just t t touring and uh I'm telling you like people were waiting in line and I just got to go right in and it was awesome <laughs> 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 on flights you know I get the first seat no matter what it was it was great but That's just to so say nice. I did have um they discovered a cyst in my ovary mm -hmm. when I was pregnant so uh we decided with my doctor to go and, and go ahead and do surgery to remove it because it kept growing so during my pregnancy at about 14 weeks I had um laparoscopic surgery where they uh called laparoscopic surgery and they removed a whole ovary actually like shocking and a big deal and a big part of the pregnancy but um something that transformed me also and made me way? stronger I mean just like it was like it felt like a very brave act to go into yeah. surgery go under when you're pregnant well, pregnant yeah yeah and then have and uh, dealing with the emotional baggage of that as well you're probably worried about the baby too the baby was fine like yeah and then i never i remember like not taking any painkillers because i didn't want to even wow. though they they were they were prescribing me like i, I don't remember with percocet and i was like no no way i'm not taking percocet while I'm pregnant and <laughs> uh wow I mean, it was, they, they said it's fine, but like my body said no. And so I, I just dealt with the pain naturally wow. and I healed so fast. Two weeks later, I was in France dancing, pregnant. Wow. Uh, so it was That's like- so good for other women so to cool. hear because I feel like when something happens, we get so, we feel like we're so alone in this and no one is, everyone's having a perfect pregnancy and here we are with this problem. So it's so nice to hear such you know that you can make it through obstacles and you know it's we're oh, so yeah. strong and resilient as women so and resilient yes the power of like love for our babies from you know from the moment we begin feeling it is just so it takes over anything amazing um and scary and beautiful and then traveling was so fun and and like i risked a lot of things i mean i was like you know, in, in six different countries in a few months and I was pretty pregnant and it was like, you're drinking different waters and you're in different climate and like, you know, <laughs> but like, like I said, I really felt from the beginning, this baby is going nowhere. I wasn't too worried about it. I was just, just going through it. And I was pretty happy, honestly, pregnant. And I, I kind of loved it and I didn't stop moving. I kept dancing and teaching. And uh, so, I recommend that, of course. Motion is lotion for the baby, for you. And today my baby is a very incredible mover. And I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but if it does, I think it's worth it. Because she is yeah. pretty she's pretty advanced. Yeah, I see that in Indy too. So I think mm -hmm. it, it it does run in the in the genes, I feel like. Yeah, in the womb. Uh-huh. <laughs> That will do, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, so then, so when did you come back from travel for like to begin to get ready for for the labor and birth? Yeah, I got back. I was around seven and a half months pregnant. Okay. So there was like only a few months left. Um, <laughs> and we threw we threw an awesome baby shower, and we like just we're just getting ready and uh did you have the same what, practice throughout or did you were you seen by doctors wherever you were or by midwives no I had the same doctor okay so you were able to like come back in between to to have um your appointments yeah 
Okay. And actually, the doctor that did surgery on me, Dr. Tiger, she is, a, we, her and I had an amazing relationship. Um, she's a gynecologist, OBGYN and surgeon. And she, first of all, did an amazing job. And besides that, like our relationship was so like, I just loved her so much from the beginning. Um, but what's crazy is that I actually decided not to go with her for the birth. And I even transferred hospitals because I was scared that I was scared that, oh, she said that it wasn't likely that like, it's not guaranteed that I would get her for the birth. And so mm -hmm. for that, for that reason, I was like, well, then I don't, I don't want to take the chances because I'm scared that they're going to force me into a C-section or whatever, because it was a more like medical kind of setting. Yeah. 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 where she was and then so and then there was some there's a place here called the alternative birthing center which is located in a hospital and it's run by midwives and I was like oh that sounds so much because I was reading Ina May and I was like you know I'm just in general I don't uh like medicine to me comes from dancing <laughs> and laughing mm -hmm. and traveling and uh feeling things and plants it's, it's not necessarily like um pharmaceutical right unless it's really bad of course but you know even that so I just have like a different relationship with with that kind of world and so I wanted I was first going to go with midwives and to do a home birth but then that cost too much money and at the time I wasn't working so it was like I had Medicaid I was like okay I'll just do this perfect alternative birthing center so yeah I train I I called my doctor and I I you know, it was kind of sad. And then I, uh, I went with the um, alternative birthing center. Yeah, at Oshner. And, and anyway, then, so once you, you decided you that, yeah, I can hear you. So once you decided that you then you went with another practice and then um, how was the actual, what were you doing to prepare yourself for the labor? In class. And I, I wasn't too worried of, I mean, I read Ina May, mm -hmm. An another incredible book that I think every person should read was the continuum concept. Mm, I that remember like, you telling me about that book. I started reading it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it really helped me remember like that I am an intuitive human and that I, you know, I can trust that. And so that, and then it also helped me with getting, gearing up for parenting, especially in the beginning with an infant, with an infant. So I, I recommend the continuum concept. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just like reading some and just like as a dancer and someone who studied a lot of biomechanics, like I wasn't too worried about it. I like know, I, I know the body inside out. I, I've been studying it for years, like profusely. And so I was, tr and I, I was trusting my, my, myself and my knowledge to know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, I wasn't too worried about the birth itself. Yeah. And then especially like knowing that I had midwives and I got a doula just in case. Oh, you did have a doula. Okay. I did. I, I, I had an okay. amazing doula. Nice. Yeah. Uh, my doula is, is um, like few generations older than me maybe one or two and ha is a sex ed teacher and um is a an activist for uh, abortion rights and a lot of amazing things sex workers I mean she's a very important person in this city and also mm -hmm. just to me um she's kind of like has like fairy vibes <laughs> so uh she was cool. She was great. She ended up for the birth itself, like, well, I'll, well we'll get there, but yeah. um, she's very knowledgeable and has three has three kids, I think, and is also a grandmother. So I really trusted all that, you know, mm -hmm. going with Absolutely. her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we decided on getting her like last minute, uh, okay. at, like really last minute. Like I was already... I think like right before my due date, I like, oh. I was like, let's get a, let's get a doula. Yeah. Okay. 
And it was more because of like Russell. I think I, I wanted, um, I wasn't sure how he was going to be in the birth. And I was like, I just yeah. need another, another woman there. Um, yeah, that's wise. Yeah. So that's how we prepared. Also, we, um, like, I really recommend getting, like, we had, um, so the alternative birthing center is in the hospital, but it's an, on a separate floor, but depend, mm -hmm. there's a lot of restrictions. So depending on like how far you dilate, when you go in, blah, 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 you might not be on that floor. You might have to go to the normal hospital to give birth and then, okay. but the midwives stay with you. Okay. So it's kind of like, it's not everything you wanted, but it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened to me. But I, um, bought like birth, I bought like, um, oils, essential oils mm -hmm. and the diffuser for my room. And that was really helpful because every doctor that walked in my room was really happy to, <laughs> because of the smell was so, like, the smells were so good. So it was like soothing for them too, you know? Uh -huh. um, and I remember like that being nice and um, music, like I had a, like, like music going. And so we had like the Bluetooth thing and um, oh yeah. And like, I was just walking around with my mom before, you know, like when I was really pregnant, she was here. She was with me at the birth too. And we were at Urban Outfitters and they had like squeeze balls like on sale. And so we're like, I'm like, oh, so instantly, like, I was like, oh, this will be good for the birth. Let's just buy it. And so we bought two of them and I used them the whole thing, throughout the whole thing. Oh, so you that were was, just like taking it out of the balls? Yeah, it was really yeah, helpful. That's great. Uh, to transform the pain. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And what else? I had a rolling pin for my muscles. Mm -hmm. And I, I really recommend all of these things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's how we prepared. And um yeah when I was think, he, when was her like uh, arrival date I think I need to charge my phone as I talk to you so that it doesn't die okay. so let's just take a one quick break sorry I didn't know it was gonna happen like okay. these iPhones sometimes you know you cannot rely on them I nope think. you cannot yeah but let me see if I can do this Okay, what were you? I can try to do as we talk, or you want to? Okay, you want, you want to wait? No, Maybe we can still second. talk. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, we can talk. Yeah, yeah, I guess my question was mainly like once, um, had you kind of um, planned for what you would do once labor began? And also before that, when was your, uh, uh, when was she supposed to arrive? When was Ralph supposed to be on Earth side with you? Um, so amazingly, her due date was on January 14th, which is the day I moved to New Orleans. <laughs> wow. So it was like, a, it was my New Orleans anniversary and also like very meaningful in terms of our relationship. And uh -huh. it felt like I met Russell and then I moved here, like, and it kind of felt very meaningful. Like it's two years later, my, my due date was on the day I moved. Um, let me see, just see if that it's working. Yeah. Can you see me? I can see the side of you. Maybe you can find a way to center your face in again so we can see you. Yeah. Is that better? Yes. Perfect. Okay. I <laughs> um, yeah. So due date was January 14th and I felt very, uh, like I, th I felt she was coming by, it was like Christmas time, like New Year's. I was like, I'm giving birth, but it was not till 10 days after the due date. Oh, <laughs> so wow. She came, okay. Yeah, she came, uh, she was born on January 24th. So I was caring for a long time and it was like heavy. <laughs> um, and my mom came because I felt it so strongly. Uh -huh. I told her to come sooner. And so she was with me in New Orleans for like weeks, just waiting. Yeah. Um, and that was fun. We were like partying every day. We were going out, listening to music. I was dancing. I was like trying to dance as much as possible, like going salsa uh -huh. dancing to try to get the baby out. And finally we used, um, an acupuncturist. Like it was already like, like, okay, 
I didn't want the hospital to induce me. Did so we you, had an acupuncturist yeah. who did some kind of inducing and it worked because okay. two days later I went into labor. <laughs> oh, nice. Was it just points or did she have to do the, um, what is it called? The moksha, the, the burning of the herbs on top of the points. She just needled. Oh, okay. she might have done that. I don't remember. Um, but it, I remember it hurting. I, didn't li I don't like acupuncture so much uh, personally, but I was, but um, yeah, she was gentle. It was just, I don't really like the needle thing. So, but so you felt a shift when she worked on you? Or no, was it like I, shortly after you went into labor? It was just, I didn't feel a shift. I just felt pain. And then I remember uh, like, I didn't like it, but then like a few days later, I, I yeah, it started, you know? Okay. And how did and it so, start for you? Um, the, what's that called? The plug? What's the, yeah, the mucus plug? Yeah. I was, we were watching Seinfeld and I was like laughing so hard and then it came out <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was, cause I, I was starting to get a little anxious, honestly. Um, be, and the reason I was anxious was because, well, I had my mother there who, brings up a lot of emotions for me because yeah. she's my mother yeah and um and I was feeling like okay I'm about to transform I knew that I was about to transform as a person and I was like mm. scared of letting go and scared of of, of that transition I didn't, you know it was like oh my god this is the last time I'm gonna be me like this mm. and and it was just That's like so a, a very emotional yeah it was very emotional for me so like I remember like, like just my mind was racing and all that. And um, so I watched something funny just to kind of relax and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then like, so yeah, the sign felt that, then the plug and then a day later, like, or like 24 hours later, mm -hmm. I started at like four in the morning, I started feeling like the contractions you know mm -hmm. and um and it was like four and I like was feeling them and then tracking them with an app and then were I you by the yourself or did you did you wake Russell up did you call your, oh, he was your doula a, I did all of that like my mom was in the other room Russell was with me and um my doula I called her too I waited like maybe 40 minutes to call her Mm -hmm. So they were coming like every 10 minutes or something, maybe longer, but it was like strong. And then mm -hmm. it just like started coming faster. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm, you know, and then uh, my water broke a little bit in the bathroom. Okay. So then I, the hospital told me I should come in. The doula told me you should wait till you're six centimeters, then call me. And I remember okay. that being weird. I was like, what? I thought you were supposed to be with me throughout the whole thing. Like, I didn't understand that. But um, eventually I called her when I was, we went to the hospital, like what woke my mom up. And at five in the morning, we were in the hospital already. And they checked me and I was only two centimeters dilated, which I've been for like a week already. Yeah. So I was like, oh, and so they're like, well, you're gonna have to stay on this floor, on the sixth floor. And they didn't let me go in the beautiful birthing center. Mm -hmm. And I was just there like feeling the contractions and it was coming hard. Um, I have to say when I walk that there's stairs that go up, um, mm -hmm. there's a little baby here when there are stairs that go up into the hospital. And the minute I like finished walking up, like all my water broke, like I completely ruptured and it was like warm water coming down my legs. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> in the lobby, like in the movies, you know, I remember loving like my bags broke in three parts and I remember the first time it happened naturally I was like oh this is so great it felt like such a relief yeah it is a release but it was like in hospital world it's like yeah. not a good thing it's not a good thing because you're now at risk whatever. right so I was like then laboring and then I you know like it was just we were going through it and Russell was so attentive to um, my pressure points and like the acupuncturist gave us some tips on like pressure points in the feet 
Mm -hmm. you can look that up like acupressure and that really helps with like the kind of like releasing the pain of the contraction and then also like my uh like he was pressing really hard on my back like to counter uh counter pressure so that I would Mm -hmm. feel more like what he was doing rather than the contraction and it really worked and but honestly I needed more hands because it was like the pain was it was it was intense yeah I didn't I didn't hate the pain I just was like needed like I just needed a team was your doula there at this point did she join you so no and then I like then when I yeah then when I felt that I needed more hands I was like I know you said six centimeters but that's probably not happening anytime soon (laughs) so can you please come she's like okay I'm gonna come and when she got there like it was really great because she was also helping with the pressure points and all that and like a like a female energy in the room was was beautiful yeah um you feel like you felt more safe once she was there like you could relax more and lean into your I I I just felt like I, I I feel really safe with Russell um Uh, and I just think like birth is such a uh, big the more people for me I felt like the more people the better yeah just uh, like kind of like a a team of people helping would would be great because I needed I needed like someone on my feet someone on my back like if I were to be a queen that's how, how I would have you know I'd probably hire like a sumo wrestler (laughs) uh but then basically like hours were going by so quickly time was not a thing I didn't even realize like I couldn't believe how fast the time was going it was like already hour 18 of me laboring and like basically I didn't dilate I wasn't dilating fast Mm -hmm. um and like for 18 hours the contraction intensity wasn't matching the dilation pretty much no yeah no um and (laughs) then the midwife who started the birthing center um I really loved her she has a a very she's a great sense of humor she was a really really cool person but um something happened I don't know if she'll ever watch this video so I could say it but she transformed into a kind of like way she, she did the thing that to happen which is like she pressured me into getting medicated and I felt like I couldn't believe that that was happening like very mm. it was weird that the, the, the person that I trusted that was going to be like on my side about like doing things naturally was actually the one like insisting I move on and she like snapped her fingers like she's like come on let's come on how long because I was already on the floor like but that's okay to be on the floor you know yeah that's part of it you become an animal when you're in you're in labor I didn't mind the pain like I I have like a high pain tolerance it's just it was just and then she was like saying she's like let's get this going let's get this moving and then Mm. the way she said it I felt like at that point I had no like I was like you know, surrendering for help. So I was like, kind of, but I, I didn't want the medicine. I just wanted help. Did you have birth. some time to speak with your doula about it? Or it was, you felt, you felt like, because it was the midwife, you just wanted, you had put all your trust in her. I don't remember what happened there. My doula was also like, um, my mom was there the whole time and my mom was kind of nervous so I didn't always want her in the room because she wasn't like able to yeah she had the emotional present. bond that, yeah yeah so like my doula was really kind of became her doula for for most of the birth which was helpful yeah. but yeah um any I don't remember I honestly don't remember what happened there in that turning point but I like was convinced that like I was like fine she's like just take the Pitocin and I was like well I'm not taking Pitocin without the epidural because I'm yeah. not trying to feel more more pain without some pain relief so right. I was like let's do it let's just do it I was like fine whatever let's just do it because I was not dilating and like then they did it 
and I was like immediately like regretting it and it was just kind of like awful honestly Mm -hmm. um for me for me as somebody who uses their body all the time and is very like in tune with their body it was awful for you to feel um numb yeah 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 um but nonetheless like what's cool about it now that I think about it even though you're numb you're still going like the process is still happening and there's a lot like going on and like on the upper body too and it was like well yeah and also I feel like you know as a doula a lot of it's actually harder to to be with a with a woman that's on an epidural or any kind of medication because because you're not so in tune with what's happening as a doula it's really important to like remind the woman constantly like you're still in the midst of it and your hormones are still doing their their processes and just because you're not feeling it like for some women they just want to zone out and watch tv or read a book rest whatever and that's fine it's whatever the woman wants but it's nice like if the woman decides to take an epidural or is given an epidural she can still be really present and really move inwards and still connect to the baby and and I think that that's when a doula's work is really you know helpful because then you don't forget that you know you're birthing you're still doing it it doesn't you know I mean yeah because you're not a doula, doing it yeah your a doula to me is like is, is necessary I mean like I said before like the more the merrier it's just like you're going through you're the one you're the Alice absolutely Wonderland. you know yeah. what I mean <laughs> going through it no but what I mean is like I love that you, is there that, you, that you bring up the fact that you you were aware that like it, everything was still happening and there was a lot up here even happening like mentally and emotionally so yes it's great that you I was that actually experience yeah I'm, I'm like really obsessed with dolphins and water and so I, like I was like there are people texting me throughout it which was weird like but it was helpful like I, I I'm a twin too and at one point I felt like I needed to talk to my twin brother I, like I was like there were people that I needed there like if I could I would have them in the room with me but like they were in different cities so like I the phone was great to like reach out to have the support and to hear the voices that I needed to kind of like like push me along you know and like guide me um there's a little baby here and a mama <laughs> and he's like cracking up he's so cute he's probably only like three or four months maybe younger oh so beautiful um but um so we were watching I was watching a friend sent me uh it was like a gift but she sent me this awesome dolphin video in the middle of my birth and I was watching it on replay and the music was beautiful and you just see these dolphins swimming in water and I was like trying to like use that to help like Mm. just just soothe and open and we also listen to like uh like really good uh middle eastern prayer, jewish prayer mm-hmm. this guy like singing like beautiful prayer like was from like a sacred prayer book and all of that like it was it, it was very spiritual um that's beautiful yeah the the birth lasted 44 hours um, so that was a very long time, even though yeah. you don't feel time when you're in labor. So yeah. don't, uh, to all the women that are not there yet, like I wouldn't worry about the, <laughs> the, the number. It's just what it is. Like your my body was contracting for 44 hours, which is a big deal, but you don't feel it when you're in, it. you're in it. Yeah. And I actually like that it was long, um, because like, it is such a process and a transformation that if you don't have enough time to go through it, it feels like you're like, yeah. like that's a really nice point. Yeah. It was like, great. It, I think it was a little too long and it got to the point where it was like, uh, the reason it felt too long was because the medicine stopped working. Like none of the men never worked on me. The guy didn't put the epidural in right. But in it, and like, I just oh. kept feeling pain. Yeah. And like, I was really drugged and I, none of that felt good. And I was like, I had no food in me for hours. So it, it turned, it turned dark uh, after a certain time. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, this is like the most important thing I remember psychologically, like I needed everyone out of the room mm-hmm. except 
except for Russell. And um, at that point, I felt like in order for me to, to dilate, and the reason I wasn't was it was like a psychological block. And I felt like I needed to have like a very deep conversation with him that was private mm -hmm. and intimate about our commitment to this. <laughs> um, because we're, we weren't um, married and it just, I don't know, just something dawned on me. And I, I'm not even such a like, I don't think marriage means everything, but just like a, we didn't ever make the, he was always there by my side, but it's like, I just needed his confirmation that we were gonna do this and he's gonna be there. And once we like had that conversation, it was really beautiful. Like, I swear mm -hmm. to God, I started dilating <laughs> like pretty wow. quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, I made it to like nine and a half centimeters two days later. And I was like feeling the pressure down there. Like it kind of feels like you have to go number two. And like, I was like, okay, it's time. Even though like I was on, the, on all the medicine, I was feeling things still a little bit. And then like, unfortunately, my mom had gone home, took a shower, rested a bit. She came back because I, I said, I think it's time. And I wanted her to be there. And then um, they told me that the baby was stuck in my pelvis and that she wasn't going to come out this way we had to go into a C-section. Um, baiting it for a while. And then I thought like in my head, I was like, why can't they just put their hands in there and kind of the baby's low enough already, like shift it a bit so that it can mm -hmm. go through the birth canal. But they, they, I guess they're not allowed to do these things in hospitals. Um, it's just too much liability. So at that point, you know, being like on so much fentanyl and whatever they give you, and, yeah. and drug, drugged up I was like okay just let's do this let's let's just take this baby out already like I was suffering and yeah. being ruptured being ruptured for so long having your water right. broken it's like it, I was really close to um hemorrhaging actually losing a lot of blood so it was kind of like a good idea to do a c-section but I still regret it <laughs> mm. I not regret it I just wish I had a vaginal birth um because I still am not convinced that it was like an emergency because the way that mm -hmm. they were like thinking about it, like mm -hmm. I was the one who decided, decided like, okay, I want a C-section. Like I was getting angry at everyone and starting feeling like they were just like letting me suffer. Um, so I kind of was like, let's just do this. Like, why are you guys not offering a C-section? Why is this taking so long? You know, mm. even even though I didn't want it, it was kind of like, I was feeling like, I mean, after 44 hours of like, like, you know, all the, all the things happening in my body, I was like feeling like I was about to die. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't pretty, well, it, was it starts really to be intense. really emotionally also heavy to just. Be I don't even that. know where my emotions were. It was like, I was just done. Honestly, like yeah. I couldn't, yeah. I was done. I could barely talk. I was just done. Yeah. Um, it was really like, just too much I think the drugs I think the drugs they give you are over and over again and the epidural not working like it felt like someone was shooting me in the hip for like hours <laughs> like I I prefer this what I, all this to say is I prefer the natural contractions that we're having they were much yeah. better than the than the spotting pain that that came from from the medicine yeah but then we went into a c-section and um we never found out the sex of the baby. And so then when, when she was born, like it was the, like them saying, here's your girl. Like it woke me up. Cause I was like basically asleep. I, I just couldn't do it anymore. So I was just like, and then it like, I just, yeah, I remember it bringing me like, Oh, like a, it was a shock, you know, I was like, that's not what I thought. I thought it was gonna, for some reason I thought it was going to be a boy. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. The whole time. And so I was just convinced. And then that taught me something too. It's like, just like, stop like thinking things. <laughs> mm. Just, just don't think anything um, too much, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's Absolutely. no point. Just experience. Yeah. I just trust, you know, but um, yeah, it was, and she came out beautiful, perfect. Um, and latched right away. And like, oh, that's so that great. was it from then on. I, yeah like there was no problem and like it was like worth 
everything I went through and you do kind of like I was in a lot of pain from the C-section, but like you kind of like the hormones from breastfeeding and from like having been through all that, mm-hmm. like going through war and back, like it felt like nothing at that point could bring me down, you know? It was like rewarding. See, I was strong enough to go through all that. And yeah, I, I'm really prone to depression, but I had no postpartum. And I think it was all because of that birth. Like, I think if I had an easy birth, I might have been more like all the emotion would have come later, you know? Mm, that's but, interesting. So that's yeah. really interesting to hear that, that had it gone the naturally, you might have gotten. So you needed maybe to, not it, not the natural way, just like quicker. Like yeah. well, yeah, all the everything that happened, like it helped me overcome like a lot. I yeah. would say it sounds like, like you yeah. you felt like how strong you were in the face of adversity, and that just seeing yourself through that it allowed you to then really enjoy or really like feel like you were beyond any other thing. Yeah. That's Truly. what it sounds like. Yeah. And then I had a, like a, a, a healthy child and like that I was, you know, the, the milk was flowing, like couldn't move much after the birth. And it yeah. encouraged, encouraged coastly because you had to have the baby right there. Otherwise it would be painful. And now we're still right. coastly. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I'm a fan of that. I just like, it is hard. It is hard. Yeah. Um, I just, like she's still breastfeeding all night long and it's like it's really hard for me so how do you sleep I'm not really she's sleeping I'm not wow yeah I mean I'm sleeping but I'm like my shoulders hurt and my you know like it's not it's not fun for me yeah yeah and what about Russell sometimes manage to sleep yeah I mean he got um move down to the to a mattress on the floor because she takes over the bed i was gonna so. say how do you guys all sleep because <laughs> it's like all over his bed at night yeah 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 they're all over the place yeah she's i mean when she teeds it's worse with the breastfeeding like sometimes she gives me a break and she'll just sleep for hours but since she was born to me she's been like a all like you know like sleeping through the night feeding just a little bit um, she was a really like, good sleeper, I'd say. But I think it's because she was right. I was right there. Right. So anything she needed, I was there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's getting, it's getting annoying and I don't know how to stop it. And it's just, is what it is. I'm waiting till she can talk back a little more, I think. Right. But we're but trying. Can, like, understand. Understanding and she's, she's not, like, I think because of it, she's, anxiety around it so she's doing it more mm-hmm. because I'm trying I'm starting to say no yeah so it's tricky <laughs> mm-hmm. but you know it was COVID so like we had all the time to sleep you know like I had nothing like I had nothing to do forever so yeah absolutely. I wasn't, wasn't I too worried like about COVID, it COVID has affected I feel like a lot of parenting styles you know like yeah in either direction sure. like there, there was the luxury of time in whatever thing you felt, you know, whatever families felt was their thing, you had time to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, so, it, it, so whenever yeah. they, I wanted to kind of um, go over the moment of, you know, I like to call a C-section a cesarean birth because women are still, bir- like you're still birthing, your, your body is still contracting the baby out even though it's coming out of another hole so I want to hear that experience of like because you said whenever they said it's like your baby girl is here that was like you forgot about everything so do you still remember the moment where they did they pull her up over the the sheet the curtain or how yeah. how was it that you saw her I mean she looked like Chucky from the movie like <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that like she was like full of blood and like it was really scary <laughs> Then they and then and then they like I guess washed her off whatever they did. And yeah, I actually couldn't. They had to close me up. So Russell was the first one to really be with her. Um, okay. After, but then like it was like twenty minutes later I had her. But so that, he was so able now, to hold her. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. They just showed me her and then took her away. And okay. I think he cut the, the cord and whatever. Okay. Um, and cry. I remember that was really cute. Like I was waiting for the cry to like see that she's to okay. To know that she was okay. Right. Yeah. And, and, then and it, so it, yeah. what do you, and then she was on you breastfeeding and then how was, how was it for you just like processing, you know, from since then until now that she's, you said 18 months, how has it been like, 17 months yeah been for, for you to like process you know the 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 birth just as those 44 hours and how do you feel like your your emotions and the way you feel about it has shifted in this time it's a really good question I mean like in the beginning no matter what whether it's postpart what you want to call it postpartum or not like you're you have a little baby and it's so like tiny and you're breastfeeding and that is the, everything is changing and I think you kind of you are a little moody and there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of crying and that's supernatural and um beautiful and it's it feels like really like you're in a bubble like a sacred bubble um and you should like I think right after birth there should be a lot of like intimate time yeah not to, like I don't understand the whole people coming to see the newborn yeah. thing like it doesn't make any sense to me yeah. um because you're really you're really delicate mm -hmm. um but so I was I was like emotional but also strong you know like wasn't as bad as it could have been for me emotionally sometimes I would just cry for no reason or whatever mm -hmm. um I felt like that and it process, I remember the pain of the C-section and then thinking, am I ever gonna be able to dance again? Because it was like really intense. And it took me a really long time to recover. Like the other surgery was much better. And this one was just, it took me months, like six to nine months to feel my body back. Yeah. Without pain, because it was, I guess like between the contractions for so long, like the muscles working, so hard and then also uh the 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 surgery like it might it just destroyed me yeah so you do what you have to do you rest and you you eat healthy soup and you eat healthy salads and you eat you drink your juices and you, you eat healthy <laughs> yeah. um and you like rest and then i put like calendula flour over it Mm -hmm. I like made a, my doula told me all this, but like she encouraged like me to soak calendula flowers in water and then like bathe myself with that water to like mm -hmm. heal the scar. And I co put coconut oil over it and it, it healed over time. But like, um, I even had a, cause then COVID hit cause this was end of January. And then, you know, COVID hit two months later, basically yeah. a month and a half later. So then I, I spoke with my doctor, the cesarean, the one that did the cesarean, just to make sure, like I needed her to remind me why we did the C-section because I had forgotten. Mm -hmm. Like I know that they said she was asynclitic, which means she's stuck in the pelvis, but I wasn't yeah. like, I wasn't convinced something still, like I needed that confirmation that like, because you know, like the C-section's always what they go to. See, I was a C-section baby. My older brother, I mean, Russell was, yeah and like just dealing with what it what it does to your body afterwards you're like did I really need to go through this like yeah. <laughs> so you, so that like I for a while I was like kind of still in denial and I was feeling like I need more like like I felt like someone did something to me like the, that they you know and like I, I that didn't need to happen and I went through so much and I was kind of getting a little bitter hmm. and then honestly over time like, I think it, it is important how the baby comes out, but I, I really, really reflect on this. And I think it's, it's just your statement into the world. It's like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a way out. You know, there's so many ways out. Like there's so many ways out that we can take in life and that's the way out. And then it's what you do when you're here, you know? 
Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like, what's more important. And I think what I would encourage like women, like to let go of like your expectations, I guess, and mm-hmm. forgive and to forgive yourself and others and the process, because otherwise you, you hold on to like resentment or regret. You're, you're, you're missing out on, I mean, it's okay to feel the things and like have resentment and regret, but if you hold on to it, you know, like you're, you're cutting yourself short from like what you actually did. And I did a lot that I was, I was a warrior. And then after it's like what you do with the baby, how are you parenting? How are you bonding? How are you uh, like choosing your time? Like as a parent, as, as how are you giving yourself time? All of this, I think is way more important than the birth, honestly. The birth is a, is a big deal, but pararenting is is bigger than that, I think. <laughs> well, and and it's I not think gonna it's the end. way that right. And I think I think though, the way that you're you were you're able to see your birth and experience experience yourself in that birth is also em, empowering you as a mother, and it's also giving you the strength like it seems hearing it from the outside it seems like that's a big part of the strength that then you have as a mother that you were that warrior that you know went through it all and adapted and continued to change to make this baby come into the world and and was able to see it as as a strength you know and and I think that's I mean as an outsider I hear it as that's a source of it's a very important piece of how strong of a mother you you continue to be, um, so that's that's my experience yeah. of hearing you. You know, like, and and I think that's why, you know, this is why I, I do these interviews because I feel like no matter how a birth goes, it's so important. And I love what you just said because it's so important how we remember it and how we're able to like, even if at the beginning we might not be so certain or happy about the way it went, it's so important to like speak about it and go over it with different people because that memory is with us you know for the rest of life and it informs the way that we relate with our partner with ourselves with our babies and so it's so wonderful to hear you talk about it in this way you know because it's it's so important the memory that we keep of it you know even because whenever then our daughters if we have daughters go into being pregnant it's like then you have something beautiful to share you know like you can empower them to to take their journey and whatever it might be and turn it into like a blessing you know yeah yeah I love that I mean the birth the birth effect I mean the birth that long birth and I and you know it is I guess she was stuck in my bubbles because whenever I have like a tight shirt that I try to put over her she goes into uh like like tra- trauma response really quickly. Uh, like she starts crying. She hates it. Like, and she's a very tough baby. I mean, the, the, one of the toughest, toughest babies I've ever met in my life. She falls and doesn't cry and like all the things, but like that specific thing, something constraining her in any way through the suddenly hates it. And so that's really interesting. And it's not even that bad. Like I'm, I'm talking, I'm not like trying to yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. It. It's like, just like the, the beginning, the beginning of that makes her feel scared and so mm-hmm. I I like to me right away I'm like it's the birth it's the birth it's the birth yeah. you know like that's that's her experience yeah. that's what she's she's telling me like that's what her body's telling her you know so <clears throat> that's another thing is like yeah I felt I felt this like incompletion because it didn't come out vaginally and I didn't feel and there were so many drugs involved but over time I have like reached completion with it like just by like forgiving and trusting that like everyone in it was like there for my uh like the best for my best favor I don't know the words but yeah yeah yeah. and and that um and that like they helped get Ruel into the world you know which is awesome and so like Ruel is awesome to me. And so, and, and, and I'm awesome and you're awesome. And the people that are here are awesome. So why can't, you know, we just like think about that. And also I gave birth and like a week later, my mom was like, did you hear what's happening in China? There are people dying left and right, like thousands of people dying. And I was like, what do you mean? 
And it was like the scariest news I've ever heard in my life. It was something I have never was ever exposed to that, that amount of people dying at once like that from a, yeah. an illness. And I almost like, even that I didn't want to leave. I was like, I just had a baby. Like, I don't want to hear bad things because I was scared. And before you know it, it came to us, you know? Yeah. And so it was like, you had to like, you're, you give birth and you have to wake up and like continue yeah. <laughs> and, and be a part of the world. You, and, and as you're being a mother, be, like be present with the world as well, because you know, like in a humbling way, it's a big deal, but we're also yeah. just, just, I mean, it's like the biggest deal, but we're also still part of this world and we're our role as parents as new parents I think is to like really remember like humbly that we're not like we're not alone even though we feel like everything just happened to us and that this is the most important thing there's still there's a lot going on out there yeah you know so I like to try to just like fluctuate between feeling like the, the beautiful bubble of me and baby and hubby and then like also like pushing it outwards towards like, oh, here we are, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, to keep both <laughs> of the worlds there. Yeah, that's hard. That's definitely hard. And I feel and like that's what the, a lot of a lot of women in that you know came into motherhood during this pandemic. Um, I think there's a lot of there's a lot um, more fear and you know, like I feel like so in the in the chakra system, like Muladhara chakra is that first base chakra, which is all about like feeling safe and your roots and your um, just like primal needs being met. And I feel like as mothers in a pandemic, as new mothers in a pandemic, and especially like those of us that gave even gave birth during it, it's like that was really shoken in a time where it really needs to be nourished. And so, you know, I, I really hear what you say of like, there I was with this new baby and like in this bubble. And then all of a sudden it was like news of death and like threat and fear. And it's, it's a mm -hmm. lot because you're, you know, oh that my bubble gosh. is beautiful, it's insane. but you're also trying to keep a baby alive that you've never done before. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of like, and you're healing. And so it's a lot. It's absolutely It a was lot. a lot. Yeah. That's why you just kind of have to come up from the deep water and just like, breathe with everyone and not feel like um like those hard emotions come in so much because you there's yeah there's just so much more to come I don't know like I think it's good to feel things but not to get stuck in them especially especially in those moments like it's just I I, I was even like telling myself like I'm not afraid of COVID I'm not afraid like I like I did travel mm. and you like when we started this conversation, you said, I can't believe you did so much during the pandemic. And it's yeah. because I like, I didn't want fear to overcome. Me. Yeah. I didn't want, I, I, I was noticing it. And I say, everybody is in fear mode and I'm not going to let that come to me or my baby. And like, I tried as much as it came sometimes, but I tried as much as possible to just like chew that away, you know? Good for you. And it, it worked. Yes. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. And my baby's yeah, brave can... and she helped me. I, I saw that through your, you know, your Instagram, I was, you know, I had the opposite uh, reaction to it. I usually in my life, I'm usually very much like that. You know, I've gone through, I've gotten through a lot of things doing that. And it was surprising to me. And I think watching you really made it clear, you know, and to just, I, I went into, I think because I was, I gave birth during it. I was very taken over by the fear for a very long time and fear, you know, for myself, for the baby, for the parents. So it's, it's really nice to hear this because I feel like, you know, these things will continue to happen. And, you know, maybe women watching this 10 years from now, who knows, you know, there's always something happening, hopefully not as big as this, but it's so, mm. it's so important to remind each other that, you know, fear is there, but we can choose collectively to, to live in a mental space that is aware of it, but also free of it. And that that's all, always like an option, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy oh, to bring that up. Yeah. It's always an option. And yeah. I mean, I know not everybody gets to breastfeed, but those who can, I would choose it 
in a heartbeat because it is so soothing and like the hormones and like the the connection it it helps you uh root and ground yourself so i i recommend it so much even though it's hard and it's tiring like i it really helped me and i can't like advocate more for it because it just feels like wow like and then the breast milk during the pandemic was like the medicine you know, right. it was like, nothing, <laughs> nothing's going to hurt my baby. She's getting breastfed. And then sometimes I would take some breast milk because I was like, this nice. is good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, like, this is going to like help my immune system or whatever. And, and I felt very strong because I was breastfeeding. I still do yeah. still breastfeeding. And like, feels, it feels like, like I have protection. Mm. Um, so I, I encourage that. it to, 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 to the moms out there and yeah so we're on this what else what else yeah. would you say to to the mamas watching this uh like trust other people trust yourselves trust mm -hmm. your partners and kind of like a lot of unexpected things happen most importantly i think trust yourself you know mm -hmm. like use that intuition that's been so strong while you're pregnant because that's kind of what happens when you get pregnant you your intuitive um body is like the loudest um and so birth and then after like keep that intuition like keep talking to it so that you know what you need and what your baby needs and don't doubt you know like because it's it's that's where it is for me I mean, it's just it's like it helps me with everything knew exactly what my baby needed when <clears throat> when I ever didn't know I just asked somebody you know <laughs> um but that was rare and it's still rare and so yeah I don't know it's like just I don't want people to worry so much about like birth I guess I wouldn't mm -hmm. because I think like I think that you could trust yourself that it'll be okay um mm -hmm. that your your body is going to let you like go through it and other people are going to be there for you and um courage to do it as natural as possible because in my experience the contractions were less painful than um than the epidural mm. but you know that's not everyone's experience and I, I i enjoyed feeling the 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 body through it as opposed to mm. like numbing half of my body i enjoy right. enjoy that a lot more um and I don't know, I, I just eat healthy is really important. Eat healthy, eat healthy food, whole foods. It's very important. <laughs> I don't know. No, um, those are my, and I part... feel like you've given a lot more also tips in, throughout the whole thing. Yeah, my, um, my food pop up, I think I'm going to start venturing a little bit into the postpartum world with making like foods for moms who give birth like a package of different kinds of foods that I I wanted and was craving after birth, like a really good soup, my mom's soup. And like, I make these breastfeeding cookies that are filled mm -hmm. with dates and good stuff. And like, just like healthy meals and yummy stuff. Um, so that's something that I think I'm gonna work on a little bit more in the future. Yeah, maybe you should also do it as a blog. So women that are not able to get it from you directly could have it access to it online yeah that's a great idea <laughs> <laughs> if i have time if i'm not chasing my no, I'm at kidding. some point <laughs> yeah for that. sure no time for sure yeah other, time is an illusion <laughs> yeah and read the can read the continuum concept carry yes. your baby as much as possible is is what that book says is hold the baby until it can crawl because that'll give it all the confidence mm. it needs and there's no such thing as spoiling a baby. That's all <laughs> I, I love have that. to say. It's true. I love yeah. that. I'll put the name of the book in the in the comment below. So Natalie, if someone wants to connect with you because they really connected to your story, how would they do that? Um, you get my number through BB, I guess. Or you there, can... are you active on Instagram? Like, could they reach out to yes. you through Instagram? If okay. You if you follow my um my food account which is at ima by natalie at ima by natalie then you can okay. contact me on on the messenger 
and I'm I'll make sure to, to add that as well in the comments so yeah. people have it. For sure. All right. Yeah. Thanks well, so Natalie, much for having thank me. Thank you so much for being here. It's I'm so happy that I finally got to hear your story and it's just been yeah. so full of wisdom and, and uh, yeah, beauty. So thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much, Bibi. I love you and love, I can't wait you. for our families to meet. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Take care, babe. All right, we'll talk to soon. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>